Oh, no, 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 no look, we're there. We're there. But I don't think you're, so you're going there. So it's good to meet you. This is what she's saying. And let's go. Up. Let's just click on one of them just mm -hmm. to make sure that we can see the. Yeah. All right, we're going to get the meeting started. Good morning, everybody. Or good, good morning. Wow. <laughs> good evening, everyone. It's nice to see a full room. Um, please bear with the board. We're having some minor technical difficulties with board docs, so it's a little bit harder for us to all navigate. So be patient with us. Um, we are calling the meeting to order. Uh, okay. Yeah, like even, yeah. Okay, pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, public notice of this meeting has been given by the board secretary in the following manner. Posting written notice on the official bulletin board at the Voorhees Township Public Schools Administrative Building on July 6, 2022, sending written notice to the Courier Post on July 6, 2022, filing written notice with the Clerk of Voorhees Township on July 6, 2022, and posting on the Voorhees Township website on July 6, 2022. We'll all rise to salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board Secretary, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bryce? Present. Mrs. Casenza? Here. Ms. Ketover? Here. Dr. Levy? Here. Mr. Rosner? Here. Mrs. Rudder? Here. Mrs. Stupler? Oh. Here. Mrs. Ver Ms. Verdi? Here. Mrs. Watson? Here. Okay, we're gonna move to the presentation of the 2023-2024 budget. Thank you. Um, everyone should have uh, picked up a packet that was available for the budget. And I will go over each page of that. And then we'll have time for public comment and board comment and a vote on the budget. Um, the first page of the packet right here um, addresses the budget process. And it just goes through the flow of where it starts at the board of education level, goes by building departments, business office, board finance committee, business office, board of education votes on it in the end. So we'll just breeze through that very quickly. If we go to the next page, it's our school budget facts. Um, this general fund state aid increased by $70,000, $70,104. In total, our state aid is $6,081,445. There's a formula that the state runs and uh, they figure out what is your fair share of state aid that you would receive. And in our case, our amount goes up. We would be entitled to maybe 90,000 more, but with the calculation, we get 70,000 more. So that's great. Um, we're happy about that. So then uh, we don't get any more debt service aid because we paid off all of our debt as of March 1st. And we also are getting preschool expansion aid now. When we, when we started the preschool, we applied for the preschool aid in, um, in August of 2022. We received word that we were getting it in September and we received a million sixty four six ninety six. And for the next year, we're getting $4,845,395. And that is to cover a projection of 305 students based on the space that we hope to have available. Um, the total budget, for this year is higher by $13.4 million, 13 million. And the biggest part of that is because we're budgeting for preschool expansion of $11 million. Uh, we also have eight new positions in the budget, in the general fund and three funded by grants. We have a speech therapist that's changed from, from part-time to full-time, a BCBA, two professional development coaches, two elementary Spanish teachers, an ESL teacher, special ed teacher for the autism program. We also have a supervisor of special education funded by IDEA, preschool intervention specialist funded by the preschool expansion aid and director of early childhood and literacy that's funded by um, the budget and also uh, preschool expansion aid. The other part of the budget that went up is there's a contractual increase in staff uh, because there's different, um, bargaining units that have increases built in. Also CPI this year, the state tells us what the CPI is and that's consumer price index. That went up by 5.86% when in the past it had gone up to 1.91%. So these are all um, things that increase our expense side of the budget. 
But the good part is the budget maintains all the existing programs and student services and stays within the 2% cap, tax cap. So we are increasing our tax levy by 2%, which equals $1,008,189 for us. And um, we don't have any piece for the debt service again because we don't have any debt service right now. Um, I'm gonna skip over the next, next bullet item because we'll be talking about on the next page. Um, when you're balancing a budget, you have the revenue side and the expenditure side. And we just talked about a lot of the expenditure side, but in order to balance it, you have state aid, you have um, tax levy, but you also have reserve money that we can use. So we're doing a, with, we're doing a withdrawal from capital reserve of $13,634,000. And as I said, 11 million of that is for the preschool expansion. Um, we're withdrawing $400,000 from maintenance reserve and $300,000 from the emergency re reserve. There's also a fund balance surplus from a previous year that we can that we are we are required to apply to the budget. Typically, that's about a million dollars. But this past year, during COVID, we had to keep 4% in our fund balance, and that got changed to 2%. So that freed up some additional money to help balance the budget this year. We tried to use it mostly for one-time expenditures. We also get grant money, and so we listed our ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 funds. And as I mentioned before, with our preschool expansion, um, we, we have a total budget of 5,651.23, and that's made up of um, state aid and also money that we have to transfer from our general fund of 805,628 to cover inclusion students. The next page is probably a very meaningful page to everyone, and that's our budget fact sheet. So it shows, it highlights some of the things that we talked about on the previous page, that our total budget went up by 13 million, which we already went over that. The total, I'm sorry, the general fund budget, the total budget is higher because that includes all of our grant money and so forth. The tax levy, like I said, went up 1, 1, 8,189, which is a 2% increase in our budget. But the good part is the rateables in the town in the township have increased by 25 million. So that spreads the tax increase out further. So a 2% increase for us is only a 1.2% increase to taxpayers, which equates to uh, $49.09 of a tax increase on the average home that's valued at $262,460. Um, so the tax increase is a penny 0.87 cents. Then after that, there's a few information pages that just show the percentage of our revenue of the different components. And you can see that most of our revenue is local tax levy. And then we have state aid, federal aid, and other resources. Then our operating budget, it shows the breakdown of that. And then the last section is our advertised budget. So the advertised budget was in the newspaper last Wednesday. That's a requirement. And the advertised budget comes from the New Jersey Department of Ed software. And what it shows, it shows an actual advertised enrollment for the years 21-22 uh, and our projected enrollment for 23. Then, the, then it goes through all of our revenue line items and then all of our appropriation line items. And this is all prescribed by the state. So we don't, we don't have an option. It all just flows into their software and prints out the same for every district. And then there's a page on recap of balances and that goes over our reserves that I was talking about. So it goes over how much we have left in our capital reserve, how much we have left in our maintenance reserve and so forth. And then there's another page on the per pupil cost. And then the final page talks about our capital projects. So as I had mentioned, we are using capital reserve to pay for projects. So I will read off those projects that total $13,634,000 plus a $300,000 project that we're using emergency reserve for. So we're doing replacement of exterior doors, replacement of interior doors, replacement of windows, refurbished bathrooms, re-asphalt parking lot, upgrade playground at Osage, renovate media center Crescent, upgrade lighting to LED, conversion of municipal water and sewer at Admin, the security camera installation, oh, sorry, that's security camera installation, the installation of keyless door control system, that's the, that's the project that we're using emergency aid for because you can only use emergency reserve for certain items, one being security. So we're using that money towards that. Uh, replacing carpet with hard, hard surface flooring. We've been doing that throughout the district in phases. And again, the big item is the preschool expansion of additional classrooms. So that totals the 13.6 million plus the 300,000 from emergency reserve. 
So that is the whole overview of the budget. On our agenda, we have um, item 5.4, which is the vote on the budget, and it lists certain key dates. On March 15th, we had to present our tentative budget for the board to vote to submit it to the county for review. Our, we received um, approval from the executive county superintendent on the budget with no changes at all on April 14th. We advertised it on April 26th and tonight is our public hearing. As you can see, the general fund budget is $75,062,072. Special revenue is grants and that's 6762214 which includes the preschool expansion aid in there, uh, grant. And then um, the total budget is 81824286 with a local tax levy of $51,417,626. Again, 2% increase to us, 1.2% to the taxpayers. Um, the next items that are listed that we also have to get approval on is the withdrawal from capital reserve of the 13.6 million with a detail of the projects in the statement of purpose. All these are required items that we have to list. The ne next item is approval of the maintenance reserve withdrawal of 400,000 that goes towards required maintenance. Um, there's also the emergency reserve withdrawal, like I mentioned for the keyless door fob system. And we have to also list our travel regulations and travel, the definition of travel is actually professional development that you go out to attend. So those are the components of the budget that needs to be voted on tonight. And after the budget is approved, we post what's called a user-friendly budget. And again, that is directly from the state software. We post that on our website and that has to be posted within 48 hours of this meeting. So at this time, um, the next thing, yes, okay, very good. Yes, thank you. Um, we are going to open for public comment on the budget, the 2023-2024 school year budget only. Um, I actually do. If you want to make a comment, please come and write your name at the, uh, the write-in sheet on the side. Um, and we will hear your comments. We, at this time, will not be responding to any comments, but we will, at a later date or time, respond by email or um, directly to the person who is asking a question. I think in the public hearing that we can respond, just during the public hearing. Oh, on the budget. On only a budget. Okay. After, after everyone, I think. Yeah. Okay. After everyone asks their questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everyone, uh, good evening. My name is John Zavok, and uh, my wife and I moved here about two years ago. And thank you for the insight into the budget. Um, something that I'd really love to hear as a line item is funding that's being devoted to improving our standing in the state and nationally. That's in 2003. That's a long time ago. I'd like to see one of those that's more recent or more national standings raising our test scores within the state. Um, when you allocate money specifically to that type of a project, then that's the best chance of it happening. Having a line item that says, this is the carve out, whether we need to study whether we're paying our teachers enough, how are we standing next? And maybe that's in there buried somewhere, I didn't see it. Um, but if you have, if as a board you set a priority, you're like, this is what we're going to be spending our money on. This is going to be a project. We're going to staff it. We're going to put people behind it. We're going to put money behind it and purposefully go toward it with the same kind of momentum that you have on having no debt. I hear that a lot. We have no debt. We have no debt. I don't care how much debt we have. What I care about is my kids going to the right schools. And that's not going to happen because we don't have debt. That's going to happen because our rankings are, we have the best teachers. We have the best schools. And we're, we're progressing our kids along in that path so that when, when they finally get to Voorhees or get to Eastern, then when they try and get to Princeton and you know, other schools, they have a better chance. So I'd like to see more dedication specifically in the budget around improving our test scores and our state ranking and our national ranking. Any other questions?
uh, Joseph Pettitamanch. Um, I am an employee of Orts, but I will be speaking strictly as a parent of two students who receive special services and as a taxpayer. Or he's for 23 years. Um, I've been an employee for 26. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, I wasn't sure the support we got from the local town, if the town council was part of the discussion for a preschool program of 11 million. Um, I usually attend the town meetings. I haven't been for a bit, but I haven't heard it discussed there. And I know over the years when we ever have done a, a, a larger construction, they were part of the plan because they will be the ones with the tax burden. Um, I wasn't sure if that was, if they were contacted, I would consider them a stakeholder. So if you could answer that, that'd be great. Um, I am a little upset tonight just because uh, this was a lot to digest just today. I wish I had a little more time to get into the, 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 the agenda. Um, the second one that concerned me was our site changed from Gibbsboro to Osage. Well, the last one, the building, the property we were acquiring was on Haddonfield Berlin Road, and I believe parts half and half. That was on the on one of the last board agendas was listed as, as and then tonight it has it listed as pre-K classroom addition at Osage Elementary School. Is it okay if I address that right now? Sure. It's okay. The, I, I can explain that during my section. That doesn't really mean we're switching anything. It's it's really for applying for grant funding. So don't worry about that one. I was going to talk to, about that under my board secretary section, or should I just talk about it right now? If you wouldn't mind. Okay. okay. There's we always like to apply for every grant that's available, right? When there's money out there, we want to we want to try to get it. So we are still what we put on the April 18th meeting is to apply for a grant for the building that you mentioned. Okay. Right. At Gibbsboro. And that is due by May 31st. But just in case we want to cover all bases for any kind of application of funding, we don't want to miss it because if we don't do it tonight, May 30th comes and we're out of luck. Right. So we want to cover any option that there is because nothing is uh, is completed yet like no the no it's not concluded let's put it that way so we felt that it was safer and in our best interest to apply for two locations just in case and so we're submitting that to the state because there's different funding out there for renovations you could get up to 40% of the cost of the renovation for new building you get up to 40% of $143 per square foot so they're not really equal funding but at this point, the other thing is um, it could be tied to whether you own something yet or not. Everything is, it's all new. Like nobody knows how this grant is really going to go. We just don't want to miss a window of opportunity. So we're doing any option we can do to try to get this money. So don't be concerned or worried. I, I'm sorry that it looks that way. Okay, um, I had, yeah. And, and again, I was going to address that in the board secretary section, but we put that on there because we're like, oh no, if it doesn't work out with the one grant, maybe we can get this, maybe it could be transferred, the money could be transferred, whatever it is, because there's so many unknowns with this grant funding, because it's, it's brand new, we just don't wanna miss the opportunity or have to have a special meeting right before May 31st to say, oh, by the way, we wanna apply for this too. We figure we'll put it on now, our architect can do all the paperwork and we could submit it because we want every opportunity we can to get grant funding. Okay, so it's not? It's not. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry for the alarm. I'm no, sorry. It was. Um, yeah, sorry. I sorry. wasn't sure how many board members actually have been to Osage. I actually know all the schools just from sporting events. And well, when we had, um, before we built the addition onto Crescent, mm -hmm. we did a whole study of all of the buildings and Osage was one of the options at that time, but we chose Crescent for the 10 classroom addition. So really the only other option there would be to build in this district would be at Osage. So again, like I said, we don't wanna miss an opportunity and we don't know how the state will handle any of this. So we're just trying to cover all bases. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that. It was yeah. it was alarming to. Sorry, I'm sorry that. about that. Um, my other question was: uh, I know it's a grant, and I always we watch politics, unfortunately. And right now, uh, we have a governor who's supportive of education. I wasn't sure in the future if any how that would affect us if they remove it, because I know over the years we've had money taken from our reserves, um, and it was pretty pretty alarming. Um, 
I wasn't sure where we were doing the septic and water. Is that at the administration building? Okay. Um, the other, oh, that's a different one. Um, and I wasn't sure what would become of the building at Crescent. What would that, because uh, I'm not sure what's housed in it specifically now. Um, I know it's not large enough for preschool, obviously. And the only other comment I had, was, and I, I read through the grant, what was required, what positions you had to have. Um, and I know, you know, director and all things along those lines. Um, I would just also hope under those to look at the lower hanging fruit, people who are at the bottom um, and add that in as, as far as what we, we do um, when you add that many children in, um, I have two daughters um, and I will say I have a daughter on the spectrum and I know that there's more and more students and with that particular case, you need more individual support than we might budget. Um, just basic things, she's highly successful, college drives and works, but um, I know there's different severity. So I wasn't sure, even though we, I know we have to have or have certain positions, director and things like that, to take consideration for people who are gonna be more on the lower level every day with them. Um, and then I have other questions, but that's not part of the budget. Thank you. Yeah. And when I mean lower franging fruit, I just mean IAs and stuff. So I apologize. Um, I, I see that there's no more questions, so we're going to respond to the questions that we can right now, and then we'll take board comments. Okay. The, um, the first gentleman, I know he spoke about how he would like us to focus our money, and I think that's, I don't have an answer for that. That's part of the I'll budget. Yeah, I'll yes. address it. Okay. Um, Mr. pettit -Dimanche, you had said, was the township involved in any of this? And yes, we had a uh, conversation with the mayor and other, uh, the mayor and uh, also the other township that we're talking to. So yes, they were involved. There is no tax burden on any kind of renovation or a purchase of a building because it's coming from capital reserve. Um, when it comes to staffing the building, the majority of it will be under the preschool expansion aid. So everything that we're doing regarding preschool is covered by the preschool expansion aid money that we get and we are utilizing our reserves. And part of the reason is like, we have really good reserves and they should be put to good use. But you, like Mr. pettit Dimash said in the past, I mean, there was always fear of the state taking the reserves or not really taking it, but making you apply it to tax levy. Um, we want we have it, we wanna use it when it's warranted. So we feel that this is a good use of the capital reserve. Um, so there's no tax burden for this whole project. Uh, the next one was change of site to Osage. Again, I'm sorry for that alarm. We're just trying to apply for grants in any capacity that we can. Uh, the third one is septic. What If anybody has had events here, they know that we have a, a well and a um, septic. So it fills up quickly and we have to get it pumped out a lot. And so we've been trying for probably three or four years to convert this to um, public water and sewer. And it's been very difficult, but right now the architects that we have are working on it and it seems like it's getting closer. So that's something we really want to do here. Um, Crescent, the 10 classroom addition at Crescent, uh, we will continue using it the way it's used because when we had to, when we applied for our preschool expansion aid, we had to, um, tell what our universe would be. And that the state defines that as, I think it was grade one in October, 2020. And you'd multiply that by two and you take 90% of that. And that comes to about 500 students. So within five years, we need to try to have capacity for 500 students. And we don't have one place where we can fit all those students. So we will still be using the Crescent facility. We also have providers that we're using and we're also looking at this new facility uh, to house the whole entire uh, universe over in five years. So Crescent will keep going the way Crescent is. Unless, you know, maybe in the future, anything could change in any, any school based on uh, enrollment. Uh, the last thing, um, okay, the grant. Yes, the preschool expansion aid money 
does have prescribed positions based on the number of children attending, but there is also a special ed component that's not funded by the preschool expansion aid. So that's why we have to transfer over $800,000 into that line item from our general fund budget to cover the special ed children that are in those classrooms. And Dr. Allegria can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, okay. So whatever those students require or need, they will be, that will be in that school as well, but the money will come from our general fund. It doesn't come from PEA money. So I think I addressed all the questions. Thank you. Um, we're gonna hear board comments. I just wanted to, to start off by saying thank you so much, Helen and your entire team for being so diligent, answering a million and one questions that the board has had, now that the public has had, being so meticulous and ensuring that we are fiscally responsible, um, but also ensuring that we provide as much support as we possibly can to all of our children in the district. Um, to uh, Mr. Savat's uh, comment, first, I wanna thank you for always coming to the meetings and being you know, very participatory and challenging us and making sure that we are aware of everything that's going on. Um, I think one of the reasons why you don't see a line item necessarily is because everything we do, everything, all the money we spend is in furtherance of advancing our test scores, becoming the best, finding the best talent, ensuring that our classrooms are filled with the best teachers, the best aides. That is all of our goal. And I think that's why we are all serving this community is because we all wanna see as many ribbons and awards and wonderful things that we possibly can. So I think everything that we do is in service of that. Um, if, if there is something in particular, I welcome you to speak to um, Ms. Ketover on our academic, that chairs our academic committee. Um, if you have specific ideas to talk about how you think we can advance specific things, that would be, um, that would be welcomed. Any other board comments? Okay, I know oh. we have a long agenda. Okay. Um, so I believe I make a motion to adopt the final budget for the 2023-2024 school year and resolution as shown on the agenda. I am not going to read through all of it again. <laughs> I think you've done an excellent job of explaining it all. Um, and I think we, please let us know if your computers aren't working. <laughs> Oh, wait, yes, we need a, a motion. Second. A second. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the budget for the 2023-2024 school year. I'll second. <clears throat> Online voting is open. Helen, it didn't come up for me. Okay, uh, how would you like to vote? Yes. Okay. Or I. I. <laughs> uh, the motion unanimously passes. Okay. Moving on to district reorganization. Can I get a motion? Do we need to discuss it? Can I get a motion to approve all of the items under district reorganization? Actually, for some reason, I think that the, each one of them is voted on. I was going to say, do no, we have to just, vote on each one? Excuse me, Trisha, do we have to vote on each one in this section? Okay, okay. Yeah, can, yeah, okay, they all it. say action under them, but we'll just vote on the first one. Okay, thank okay. you. Sorry about that. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I'll, I'll repeat. Motion, can I get a motion to approve all of the items under district reorganization? So, so moved. Second. Thank you. I'm sorry. That was, I, it was first. Okay. Well, it's kind of a tie. I know, I was <laughs> Voting is open. It looks like I'm going to be voting out loud all night. Okay. So I thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Julie, did you do the join the meeting? It, it's in motion unanimously passes. 
We will not be having executive session at this point. Um, we are gonna move through the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the board minutes of the March 15th, 2023 regular meeting? So moved. Second. I'm sorry, who did second? Uh, okay, Kelly, thank you. Voting is open. Ms. Ketover? Aye. Okay, I have um, eight ayes and one abstention from Dr. Levy. Closing the voting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the April 18th, 2023 special meeting? So moved. Second. Voting is open. Ms. Ketover? Yes. Eight ayes, one abstention from Dr. Levy. Motion carries. Uh, I have no comments to make at this time. Um, fire drills and safety drills are um, provided in the in, in the attachments. Harassment, intimidation, and bullying report is also provided in the attachment, and so are the suspensions. Um, we have several Oprah requests that have been made um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, I believe all of them have been closed to date. Um, but you can see those on the agendas. Well, um, board secretary report. Okay, uh, thank you. I would like to go over some of the maintenance projects that were completed over the winter and spring breaks and thank Mr. Mathis and his staff for all the hard work that they do when we're not here. And also when we are here. Um, at each school, uh, I'll just go through them individually. At the middle school over winter break, uh, there's a wardrobe, wardrobe room over at VMS that they use for the plays. The whole thing was redone, painted, new flooring, everything cleaned out, it's really beautiful. Um, a clear touch board was installed in the child study conference room and throughout the district, there was a testing of emergency notification systems and lots of painting going on. Uh, during spring break, I'm not going to read all the projects, just some of the highlights. Over spring break at the middle school, 10 unit events were installed in A-Wing. LED lighting was upgraded and painting was done. At Hamilton, six new windows were installed over winter break and the testing of the emergency system. Uh, spring break, there was spring, spring cleanup was done throughout the whole district by cutting grass, mulching flower beds. At Signal Hill over winter break, electrical upgrade in the kitchen, a new oven was installed, new window shades and seven classrooms and one office. And over spring break, again, the outside was cleaned up. At administration of the, over winter break, the sound system that we're using now was installed in the boardroom and the contractor installed a clear touch board in the child study conference room. And again, painting over spring break, the outside was uh, mulched and grass was cut. At Crescent, a UV lighting, sanit the UV sanitizing light fixture installation and programming and the new addition was completed. As you know, we have UV lighting sanitize sanitization each night in all the schools. So we needed to add that to the new wing at Crescent. Um, during spring break, we installed a sidewalk to the pre-K playground. Uh, 12 safety bollards were installed for car line, installed two inclusion swings on the pre-K playground swing set and reinstalled sails for outdoor classroom. At Osage over spring break, we installed three outdoor basketball stations, installed safety bollards for car line and two motorized basketball backboard hoists were installed. Uh, so that's just a little overview. They've done so much more but I just wanted to give you a little highlight on what goes on when the school is closed for break. Um, I was going to address, again, the item that, that Mr. pettit Damage brought up, that we are submitting a, a grant request for the Universal Preschool Facilities Grant. We mentioned Osage, again, just as an option or another alternative, uh, just so we don't miss out on grant opportunities. But on April 18th, we did get also approved the, the grant submission for the other location. Um, in Gibbsboro. 
Um, I also would like to thank um, Danielle Tricano for all of her hard work on the budget. She is like the driving force of the whole thing. I kind of just do the revenue part and oversee it, but she spent many hours on this. And we were very impressed that when the county wrote back, they said, excellent job. So thank you very much for your detail, detailed minded approach to this. Couldn't do it without. Thank you. Excellent. Superintendent's report. Hey, thank you very much and good evening, everyone. I apologize in advance. My report is a little lengthy this evening, but we have such good news to share. So I am pleased to inform the community that after an extensive search, we have selected three administrative candidates for the following positions, an assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, replacing Dr. Young, who will be retiring, director of early childhood and literacy K-5, which is a new position that will be partly funded by the preschool expansion aid, and a special education supervisor, a position that will be funded through grant funding, and this position is to support our growing special education program. Their names appear on the agenda this evening for board members to consider. I will be sending the district staff the full bios of these three staff members if they are approved this evening, but I did wanna share a little bit of information about each one. First, our assistant superintendent uh, candidate, Andrew Moskowitz. Uh, Mr. Moskowitz has been an educator for 24 years. And over the course of his career, he served in various role, role, <laughs> roles, I'm sorry, including elementary school principal, middle school vice principal, supervisor of curriculum and instruction, and an elementary school teacher. And he served in two districts for the most of his career. Mr. Was Mr. Moskowitz accepted a job in Voorhees as a seventh grade assistant principal. Um, in July 2012, he became the principal of E.T. Hamilton Elementary School, where he currently serves. For the past 11 years, he has enjoyed being the instructional leader of, of a fantastic school community where students come first. Our next candidate is uh, for Director of Early Childhood Literacy, K-5, and that is Julie Lyons. And as a certified teacher, Julie Lyons taught kindergarten in a migrant program before moving to Delaware County in Pennsylvania, where she began her teaching career. Uh, as a teacher, she served in the following roles. She was a sixth grade English language arts teacher, an elementary instructional math coach, a middle school literacy coach. And in 2016, she was hired in a school district where she has since served as the director of early um, elementary education. She's grateful to have served in a leadership position uh, in her current school district where she helped um, secure the preschool expansion aid grant uh, aid in 2018. And also the district she serves in was named as a lighthouse school district in 2019. She's the recipient of many awards and honors, honors and she's an experienced educational leader with a strong background in preschool education and curriculum. And our final administrative candidate for this evening is our super, uh, candidate for supervisor of special services. And that would be Ms. Donna Ross. And she's worked in the field of education since 1991. She's taught self-contained classes, behavior disabilities classes, resource room, and inclusion. Additionally, she's worked as a developmental interventionist for the Gloucester County School Special Services Early Intervention Program. Ms. Ross transitioned to her role as a case manager in LDTC in the Voorhees Township Public Schools in September 2014. Here, Ms. Ross feels that she is at home and she immediately embraced the family feel of our district. Her case management responsibilities and grade levels have ranged from kindergarten through eighth grade. So those are our three administrative candidates. And if they are approved this evening, you will receive their full bios uh, tomorrow morning. On the, uh, on my, under my agenda is the, to speak about the HIB assessment score for our district for the 21-22 school year. The district received the 2122 scores just recently and by mandate, we have to post them on our website and they are there. So at the September 28th board meeting, uh, Susan Donnelly, our supervisor of special projects presented the district self-assessment HIB scores. So each of our schools is required to self-assess uh, using a rubric of how we are um, mandated to follow the in New Jersey Department of Education's Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act. So we self-evaluate our, our, um, each school. That self-evaluation scores are sent to the state. The state then takes our scores and looks at the SSDS information that we send to the state as the student safety data system. They compare our self-assessment scores to the data we put in that system. And remember, as you may recall, that system um, is required to be reported on twice a year. 
So they look at what we put in the system, they look at our self-assessment scores, and they determine if our scores are accurate. So I'm proud to say that the state has returned our scores and we receive the same scores that we did for our self-assessment. So we are on target to assessing ourselves appropriately. Uh, those scores included out of a total of 78 points, E.T. Hamilton had 78 out of 78, Crescent 77 out of 78, Osage 75 out of 78, Signal Hill 76 out of 78, and Voorhees Middle 75 out of 78. So again, next year we'll self-assess ourselves and then send those scores to the state. And again, every year we try to get better and better. And so we can all be at 78 out of 78. So next we had a security camera audit. Uh, in our district for each of our five schools. Ms. Donnelly, the building principal and the school resource officer led this um, review. Overall, there is a sufficient amount of cameras in our schools and they provide coverage both inside and outside of all of our buildings. The following suggestions are being made as a result of the audit. First, we wanna develop a timeline for the replacement of older cameras that have, um, with ones that have updated technology. This will take place over a five year period. We also want to reposition nine cameras. So there are nine cameras in the district that we want to reposition in order to get a better view. And then we want to purchase 22 new cameras so that we spoke to uh, Ms. Haley to make sure that that would be something that we would put in the budget. The purchase of these cameras will further enhance our security system. But I, I want to make sure that I note very clearly that we currently have the appropriate number of cameras to secure our buildings. The goal is always though, to maximize our security to the greatest extent possible. And that's why we wanna purchase the additional 22 cameras. On tonight's agenda, you will see an agreement with the Camden County Educational Services Commission, Camden County Schools Wellness Interagency Network, and it's called WIN. And I'm proud to announce that our district applied to be part of this program that is at no cost to the district. And this program will allow the district to use the services of the Camden County Educational Services Commission. We will receive, um, we were able to send our students who may need clearance. If they're experiencing some difficulty in any school clearance, they can be sent there. We also will have uh, school support. They will give us two uh, therapists, two days a week to work in our schools, again, at no cost to the district. And we also um, have professional development on identifying and addressing mental health concerns. So we are very proud to have been selected. The district had to apply for the um, grant and then we had to have an interview to make sure that we would do everything necessary to, um, to forward the mission of the grant. And I wanna thank Dr. Allegri and her team for all their hard work. So we did receive an invitation to participate and we are very happy you know, and, uh, for, for this opportunity. And uh, if the board supports this, we will be um, part of this program starting tomorrow. So it's, very, it's a great program and we're guaranteed to be in it for at least two years with uh, the option of another four year extension at no cost to the district. Um, our last parent virtual workshop series um, will take place on May the 24th at six o'clock and Dr. Young will be facilitating that workshop and it will be an overview of all of our district assessment data. Uh, so again, all of our links for those workshops are on our website. So please come and join us on May 24th, six o'clock. Again, it's virtual and Dr. Young will be presenting all of our assessment information. So I hope that you can join us. We have completed our preschool lottery and we'll be sending acceptance letters and wait list letters um, home this week. Uh, there are currently, unfortunately, 130 students on our wait list, um, and we will continue to explore options to serve as many students as possible next year, but our goal is hopefully by the 24-25 school year, we can service the majority of our preschool students who would like to be in school. Again, we have five years, but we want to try to do it as soon as possible uh, because we never want to see students on a wait list, and, uh, and currently we have 130. Uh, I'm proud to announce that we have bring your Child to Work Day was a success. Um, many students came in across the district to celebrate with their parents. And we had over 737 students who were absent from our district who went to go celebrate with their parents. So almost a third of our students participated in Bring Your Child to uh, Work Day. So that was wonderful that we were able to receive students, but many of our students actually went to work with their parents as well. Um, right now, I'm going to introduce Ms. Tadley and bring her up. She is the assistant principal at Osage, and she's just going to give us an overview of our new English language arts program and just talk about how that it began from the beginning to now that we have selected a, a series. So, Ms. Tadley, would you please come forward? Hi, good evening, everyone, Board of Ed members, Dr. Hockett and Mrs. Haley. 
I can start talking while this is getting ready, if that's okay. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight to talk to everybody about the new program that we're selecting. I'm going to talk to you about the Wonders program. Just before I get started, I do have materials in the back there if anyone wants to peruse um, after the meeting. And I also have a packet um, for all of you to look at as well. So I want to give you a little background on how we got here tonight. We have been using the Journeys program since 2018-2019 um, school year. It has served us very well, but we're getting to that point where it's time for an update. There's going to start being materials out of print. Um, we need to keep up with the standards of New Jersey right now, which is getting harder to do with the Journeys program. And in the beginning of the school year, Dr. Hackett held her listen and learn sessions and teachers were expressing that they also felt that it was time to update our curriculum. So that's where we began the beginning of this year. So in the fall, I sat with the four reading specialists and began this discussion. So we sat down and started just doing a lot of research about the current programs out there, what surrounding districts we're using. And we came up with our top five that we felt were worth looking into. So we requested five programs and they sent us materials and we spent a lot of time going through those five programs. The reading specialist, myself, Dr. Young, we took the five programs and we narrowed it down to two. We felt that these two were the top two that would serve our students the best here in Voorhees. So we narrowed it down to McGraw-Hill Wonders and Savas My View. Um, you can go on, thank you, sorry. So we got down to our top two and went from there. At that point, we brought in a larger literacy committee. And this is what we've done in the past too. We formed a literacy committee, again, with Dr. Young, myself, the four reading specialists, Barb Andrew, Jen Bono, Marlene Costanza, and Debbie Feigard. All of the lead teachers were involved and all of the special education lead teachers were involved in this process. That committee started looking at the two programs. We had materials for the two programs sent to all elementary schools so that all of the teachers could get their hands on the programs and really start evaluating them. On January 6, 2023, all of the lead teachers, the reading specialists, myself and Dr. Young were here for a full day meeting. We had a half day with each um, company. They came in and they went through the nitty gritty of the programs with us. And we were able to ask questions, um, dive deep into every aspect of the program. That was a really, really great day for all of us. And after that, our lead teachers and reading specialists went back into the buildings and were able to start deeper conversations with all of the teachers about what we were seeing in these programs. They had half day meetings with all of their teachers by grade level to sit and really go through the materials. And then again, allow those teachers to ask questions and we would find answers for them. We also at that point asked for volunteers to pilot these programs. So we had, a great response to the pilot program. I was so pleased I was getting emails saying, I know you have enough pilot teachers, but I would love to try this. So it was so wonderful to have so many people wanting to get their hands on this and really try it out in their own classroom. I had some teachers ask if they could pilot both. They were so eager and it was, it was really great. So we started to prepare the pilot program and get materials in. Um, so we had representatives in every building piloting at all four elementary schools and all grade levels were represented. The intervention component of both programs was also piloted. It was piloted by special education teachers and also the reading specialists in the small groups that they run. We piloted for six weeks. During that time, the teachers had access to all the materials. They had online access. Both companies were really wonderful at getting us full access. And they also were provided a lot of training, which was excellent. The companies came in. They trained, they had Q&A sessions. They were always available when we needed them. They were just a phone call away. So we really felt like we got the full experience from both companies. At the end of the pilot, the teachers who piloted got together and they really had great discussions about the pros, the cons, what they liked, what they learned. They developed presentations and they met as district-wide PLCs by grade level and they turnkeyed all the information by grade level to all of the teachers so that everybody had all of the information that we had learned in that six weeks process. And it was a lot that we had learned. So this was a really great day and really great discussion. I was able to pop into all of them because they were virtual. It was wonderful to hear what everyone saw. So I'm happy to report that at the end of March, we voted 
and 66% of our staff voted for Wonders. So I just wanna tell you a little bit about why we liked Wonders. And there's a lot more than this. I went through a lot of the highlights. It's an evidence-based widely used program. There's weekly and daily lesson plans and pacing guides for whole group and small group lessons. The program is really rigorous. It's rich in vocabulary. There's a really great balance of fiction and nonfiction texts at all grade levels. We found a lot of cross-curricular connect, co connections, excuse me, with our science and social studies programs. The text is authentic, it's engaging. I was able to go into a lot of classrooms and talk to the students about both programs that were being piloted and it was really nice to hear their feedback as well. There's a consumable book that allows the students to annotate the text, which was really wonderful for the students. Um, there's a strong writing component in Wonders, which was key for us. As we were going through this process, we were also working a lot on NJSLA writing prompts and getting our students ready. And we saw that the Wonders program really aligned with what the kids are gonna see on the NJSLA. So that was a big um, bonus for us. The content and assessments are available online. There's really great interactive games for the students that they enjoyed. There's a data dashboard that provides teachers with reports and recommendations for instruction and grouping. There's leveled readers provided for all levels and that includes questions and resources for the teacher with each reader. There's also a lot of built-in differentiation, including, including differentiated spelling lists, vocabulary lessons, and support for our English language learners. And the, one of the best selling points of this was WonderWorks, which is the intervention program that comes with Wonders. It is a wonderful program for our special education students. It goes hand in hand with Wonders so that all students can be exposed to the same content, but with level texts. It provides modified assessments. There's a lot of built-in progress monitoring. It supports inclusive opportunities for special education students. There's a foundational skills kit that's available for teachers. So if any student is um, struggling with a particular skill, they have resources they can pull from to help that student exactly where they are. The teachers have the digital access to the library of leveled readers. And there's adaptive learning available online so that all the students can have personalized digital instruction at their own pace and at their own level. So the teachers were able to pilot that piece and that was a huge success. So um, moving forward from tonight, pending board approval, we will start ordering materials from Wonders. We plan to implement this for K to two teachers next school year and then three to five teachers the following school year. We are working as a literacy committee to ensure a smooth transition, make sure we have everything ready for September. So myself, the lead teachers, the reading specialists are going to continue that conversation. And teachers will get professional development um, tentatively planned right now for the week of May 22nd from McGraw Hill. They will come in and train our teachers. And I have one last slide. I just wanted to put everybody's name on here that piloted the program because the teachers did a tremendous amount of work. And I just wanted to share with the board and the reading specialist that both companies reached out to me at the end of the pilot and said, we have never worked with a group of teachers like Voorhees teachers. They said they called us all the time. They asked us questions. They were so impressed with how diligent and thorough these teachers were for something they were potentially only doing for six weeks. So I really appreciate their dedication and the time they put into this because we all know a literacy program is really important for our students and we're going to use it for a while. So I appreciate the teachers supporting me through this and supporting our students to get the best program possible. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Great job, Ms. Sally. Thank you for that very thorough presentation. And I want to also thank all of the staff members who were involved in this process. It was a very extensive process, but I think it's important that we do go all through all the steps so we can make sure that the program we have is something that supports our district and something that our teachers uh, enjoy. So thank you so much for all of your hard work and the, and the hard work of all of the staff members involved. And I'm, I'm pleased that uh, Wonders was a choice. I purposely stayed out of the process because I was a, a advocate for Wonders. So I stayed away from the process. And so I'm glad that it was chosen. So thank you again. That was a very a great presentation. At this time, I wanna uh, proudly make a change, a correction to the agenda. On the agenda says that Crescent students would be recognized this evening for honorable mention. And I learned uh, late today that, and I didn't have a chance to get the agenda changed, that it was not honorable mention. It was actually second 
place. They actually went to a, a um, luncheon today and learned it was second place and not honorable mention. So I proudly uh, asked Ms. Milady to make that change uh, to the agenda to say that it was second place and not honorable mention. And I think that's a great change to the agenda. So at this time, I would like to introduce the wonderful principal of Crescent Elementary School, Ms. Morris, and she's going to introduce her amazing teacher and students who were involved in this countywide uh, contest. And I know that we have some parents, some proud parents here this evening, and some proud other members of the Crescent staff. So welcome to everyone, Ms. Morris. I, okay. it was a uh, water went down the wrong pipe, but thank you to everybody that offered a cough drop. And <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, Dr. Hackett, members of the board and community members. Tonight, I am very happy to be honoring some of our students. Um, that's what this is all about. So I'm happy to have them here and thank you for your patience as you sat to wait for your turn. Um, at this time, I really wanted to introduce Mrs. Hope Ivler. She's one of our amazing fifth grade teachers at Crescent. And <laughs> Mrs. Ivler always works diligently with her students to help to improve and enrich their writing skills. And this year she presented them with the opportunity to write an essay. It was not a requirement. And tonight we are going to hear a little bit about that experience and um, the outcome for the four students who decided to work collaboratively to write an essay together. Thank you. Okay, good evening. This is like my biggest fear ever. <laughs> Down. Okay, so um, each year the Third Circuit Courts Community and Rule of Law Committee hosts an essay contest for all fifth and sixth graders in Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. This year's essay contest focused on civics, citizenship, and the concept of the right to vote. Max Jacobs, Colin Cahoon, Ryan Patel, and Brooke Taflin worked together to write an essay answering the essay prompt, Why the Right to Vote is Important to Me and to Our Country. The students used the questions provided for them by the contest committee to guide them in discussion and research resulting in a collaborative group essay. The students were invited to an award ceremony this morning at the Mitchell H. Cohen Building and U.S. Courthouse located in Camden, New Jersey, as their essay won second place in this year's contest. I'd like to... I would like to invite them to come up and share their essay. <laughs> okay, so. Hi, my name is Max Jacobs. Hi, my name is Brooke Taflin. Hi, my name is Ryan Vitell. Hi, my name is Colin Cahoon. Why the right to vote is important to our class, economy, and our country. The right to vote is essential to the success of our country's democratic process. As stated in the 26th Amendment, all U.S. citizens over 18 have the right to register and vote, sharing their voice and opinion in the hopes that their voice can be the change. Our voice and vote do not just impact our country, but can also um, affect the public international law. Holding elections and voting are key factors in our democracy. We can legally vote at 18, but we've been voting for years. We vote in schools to create change, better our education and keep us safe. We vote at home, deciding on dinner, what to watch or our activities. Practicing voting at a younger age teaches us just how powerful our voices can be. Our country would be very different if we did not have the right to vote. Voting allows citizens to feel heard and take an active role in the decision, in decision making process. Taking away the right to vote takes an individual's opportunity to contribute to the growth of our country. Voting also leads to continued education. An invested voter will research and learn more about the matters being decided. We are lucky to live in a democracy where our, vo where our voice matters and our vote counts. Not all countries are as fortunate as the United States. 
In countries that do not have a democracy, official political parties are banned, causing people to form unofficial political groups. Often, these groups can be violent and aggressive toward anyone who does not stand with them or pledge their allegiance. Unfortunately, in countries that do not support fair and free elections, people's voices can be unheard. Not only are these citizens unheard, but they feel unsafe too. Unsafe to speak up, share, or have an opinion that is different or not show their support or loyalty to the unofficial political groups that are claiming to be in charge. In the, those countries, there tend to be more violent and very strict laws with harsh punishment. When people do not feel safe or trust their leaders, protesting dangerous behaviors and even a rebellion can occur. On August 14, 1765, the British colonists banded together to protest the Stamp Act with one of the most famous phrases, no taxation without representation. The colonists stood up to King George III in Parliament after being taxed repeatedly with representation. They organized boycotts, fought against the Redcoats and Loyalists, and demanded the right to have representation in Parliament. The colonists felt unheard and no longer trusted the King in Parliament. They took matters into their own hands, and we all know how that ended. In conclusion, voting and encouraging all citizens to use their voices and vote is essential. Your vote could determine the change. Do not sit out a vote because you think it will not matter. History has shown us that one person can make a difference with their vote. We wanted to give them a little something to remember this act, this event and this contest and this evening as well. So we'd like to present them with a certificate and a gift card for their hard work. Brooke Kaplan. Ryan Patel. <laughs> yes. 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 So um, both Marissa and I want to, or Dr. Levy and I want to say um, a couple of words. Uh, first and foremost, I want to check IDs because there's no way those are fifth graders. <laughs> um, so incredibly impressive. The fact that you all got up here and shared a beautifully well-written, well, very thoughtful um, essay with all of us. We're incredibly poised and mature. You made us all proud. My heart is so full. This is why we do this. Um, the whole, uh, on behalf of the entire board, we are immensely proud of all of you. And thank you for making our district look so good. <laughs> I just want to echo what uh, President Watson said. As someone who teaches college, I have seen papers uh, that maybe didn't meet that standard. <laughs> so I, I want to thank you all. And um, I think each of you may consider Model UN. I don't know if you've heard of what that is, but you would be excellent candidates. I see your teacher shaking her head. So maybe talk to her about that. Um, it's a really fun opportunity. You get to travel, learn about other countries and, you know, the economic standing in those countries, which I, I was really amazed to hear about. So thank you all for sharing that and continue your really hard work. And to the parents, thank you so much for coming tonight and really supporting your kids to do stellar, stellar work. We really appreciate all of you. Again, I just want to echo uh, what the president and vice president said. I, I'm just, my heart is full. That was such a beautiful, well-written essay. Congratulations to our parents. Thank you to the teachers and the staff of press and the principal. We all work together 
And this is the collective collaboration. This is what happens when we all work together for our students. And it, they were just absolutely amazing. And again, I think I wanna check IDs too, because <laughs> I cannot believe that fifth graders are writing like that. That's phenomenal. You should be very, very proud of yourselves. I hope you are, because we are proud of you. You have made all of us in this room very proud. I'd like to end my report by just acknowledging that next week we'll be celebrating Nurses Appreciation Day and Teacher Appreciation Week and Day. And to all of our teachers, but staff members collectively, but to our teachers, please know that you are valued, you are appreciated, you are respected, you are making a difference. These kids stand here today because of your hard work and your effort. And I want you to know that I stand as your partner as we navigate through the changing complexities of education. It's ever changing. And, as, and I know it can be difficult at times, but I stand with you as your partner as we navigate through those processes. And I thank you for all that you do for our children. Thank you very much. Okay, President, that ends my report. Um, I, I, want, I do want to give an opportunity. I know that it's late for some of the kids. I'm more than happy to allow you guys to have a few minutes to take your kids home if you'd like to and not have to stay through the rest of the board meeting. <laughs> we will not take offense. <laughs> Okay, just, just that information. Okay. Right, okay. That was amazing. That was amazing. College IDs are going to be found in some of those pockets, I guarantee you. And hire, hire some of them as your teachers. <laughs> they can help our students. I don't want to say what university. <laughs> okay. Seriously. All right. Um, thank you all for indulging. Um, I, we're going to move on to the committee reports. Um, can I get a policy committee report from Ms. Verdi? What a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, so the policy committee met uh, earlier this evening. We looked at two policies for second read, uh, P8462, reporting potentially missing or abused children. There was just a small change um, in that policy, changing social worker to director of special services. We also looked at R7441 for second read. This is electronic surveillance in school buildings on school grounds. And again, a minor change um, just to clarifying that surveillance equipment will not be placed in classrooms. We also looked at a policy for consideration that will go on for first read at our next meeting, and that is 7250 school and facility names. Lastly, the committee also um, looked at uh, our, our Board of Education Handbook that we are drafting together. Um, we are working collaboratively to um, help new and existing board members with onboarding. So working on a comprehensive document that will help new board members and existing board members um, know how our board does its work. Um, this will take several months to complete, but I thank the committee, the administration, and our legal counsel for all the work on the handbook to date. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a committee report from Mrs. Cutover? Thank you, Madam President. The Academic Excellence Committee met earlier this week, and we had a very productive meeting, and we'll be meeting again next month to pick up where we left off. We had a pretty ambitious agenda. So here's what we, we covered this week. A high-level overview of recent test results, including discussion of interventions to close gaps in specific areas of underperformance, including geometry and measurement, in math, and including writing and nonfiction text in literacy. We also talked about the development of other standards to measure success aside from standardized test scores. We talked about the process for selection of the new reading and social studies curriculum. We talked about current and future efforts to strengthen both the teaching of writing and the students' writing competence. And we discussed the strengthening of the par partnership between VMS and Eastern to understand and improve overall preparedness for high school. We focused in, in that area on improving the messaging around appropriate pathways in math, 
to ensure success in high school and beyond. On the agenda for next month, we will be looking at developing short and long-term long district goals around academic performance. We will discuss after school clubs, STEAM programming, and talk about programming to develop good student hygiene, such as organizational and time management and study skills development. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're gonna move on to audience participation. Anyone wishing to address the board, please approach the podium and write your name and address on the login sheet. If you are attending via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature to be acknowledged. While the board is limited in its ability to respond to the public on matters involving personnel litigation, negotiations, and attorney-client privilege, the board will now hear comment from the public relating to items on the agenda for this board meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes. The board will not take action this evening. You will be notified at some later time by letter, electronic mail, telephone, or in the context of a later board meeting of any action the board does take. Joseph Pettitamanch. Uh, now I'm coming in as a uh, employee. <laughs> um, want to do congratulations to Ms. Lyons, Mr. Moskowitz, and uh, Mrs. Ross on their new hire slash promotions. Um, wonderful people. Um, I also wanted to congratulate Larry Berry, Dawn Schofield, and um, our VTA union president on their retirements uh, at the end of the year. Didn't want to overlook them. Um, also, so I, I did notice the, uh, the surveillance, the electronic one. I appreciate that agenda, the addition where it's not in the classrooms. Um, I was surprised that wasn't there before. Um, the other question I had since we were going to uh, remove Mr. Moskowitz to a new position, I assume we would probably start the process of interviewing quickly for the principal at Hamilton. Um, also wanted to thank all the teachers um, as a parent of children, um, what they get from their teachers and IAs and secretaries and custodians and nurses um, is unbelievable. Uh, my daughters feel they're always very safe, even though one's now at 20, which also leads me to happy Mother's Day since most of the teachers who do those jobs also at many times act as a mother. Um, for those teachers who may not have children, they do every time they look around. Um, so that was my uh, thank you. Um, I did have two questions. I don't need them answered tonight. Um, I wasn't sure on the key fobs exactly what that meant. If that was um, into the classrooms, just exterior, if that would be the ability to lock down. I wasn't sure what features those would have. Um, and then the second one I had was um, sound on cameras. I wasn't sure um, if we currently have sound on cameras or if that's, I wasn't too positive on that one. Um, but thank you very much for your time and uh, appreciate all the board and all the work that the administration does do. Yeah. yeah. I ask you to raise the mic on the and speak into the mic. Yeah, thanks. Is that better? Um, Thank you. So I just wanted to respond to your your statement. Obviously, yes, I I understand that everyone on this panel and all of our teachers and staff are focused on our students and trying to move everything forward. So my background is working in large hospital systems, similar missions and dedication. Um, and what we found is that it, it can sometimes be helpful to bring in specialists that are outside of that system that can view sideways in and look and see how things are going. They bring in knowledge and experience from elsewhere. Sometimes it's a big boondoggle for a lot of people to make a lot of money and nothing happens, but sometimes it can be really effective. Um, and so, but they're usually expensive. Um, and if you have groups, if, you're, if there's something specific like our math scores that we really are wanting to focus on bringing them up, that, you know, it, do, we do we have, it seems like we have money in the budget to, to, to look at forming a group to say, okay, this is going to take us four to five years 
in order to move the needle. This is not going to happen in a short amount of time. It's going to take money and a sustained effort. And, you know, how do we find these people that can come in? Because we're already working, you know, at pretty high up in the game. So where can we find people that can help us identify where we can, what dials we can change to, to move further than what we're able to do on our own? That was what I was. No, thank you for the clarification. Um, moving to board comments. Any board comments? Uh, I've got I've got one. That's yes. all right. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate the thoroughness of the process that went into um, sort of down selecting to the two programs, um, and also that the one that was chosen incorporates elements of the science of reading, which uh, I really appreciate and think it's a great method to. Um, sort of make it easier for our kids to learn how to read and, and write. So um, I'm happy to see that the program that was chosen has that as a component. Um, so thanks for all your hard work. I just wanna share how thrilled I am that through the hard work and commitment of our board, our superintendent, administrators and staff, um, that this week more families are going to receive the exciting news that their children have received a spot in our full day preschool program next year. Um, my daughter is currently in the preschool program and I am just so impressed and thankful every single day that she has a spot there. Um, she has really been thriving under the stewardship of her teachers um, um, and, uh, you know, she loves it every single day. Um, to those 130 families who um, will receive the notice that they are on the wait list, um, I just want to share that I know how disappointing that can be. Um, the first time I ever spoke at a board meeting um, as a member of the public was when my daughter was waitlisted. So I know that that's tough news. Um, you know, I am, I am, rooting for you. <laughs> um, and um, just know that we are really working diligently to ensure that um, hopefully this year, you know, this year, next year is, you know, one of the last years that we'll, we'll have to have that wait list. And um, I'm just so excited that we are really building capacity to ensure that every child in this district has access to universal high quality pre-K education. And again, I thank all of our staff and our administration and this board for their commitment to making sure that that happens. Thank you. I just want to add that I'm so grateful that so many teachers participated in the pilot, <clears throat> excuse me, for the reading curriculum, because they're the, they're the folks who are going to be using the material. They're the ones who are going to be engaging with the students around uh, teaching it. So to me, the fact that we had so many people participating eagerly, you know, wanting to participate is a testament to their dedication. I also really appreciate that that we're looking at wonders. Um, we are we, as I said in my overview for the academic excellence, um, and as you've heard from Dr. Young, our scores are lower in literacy in the areas of writing and nonfiction, and it seems like Wonders addresses both of those. Um, that there, it, it, I heard from, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the teacher's name. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Thank you for your very comprehensive um, presentation. It sounds like there's an even distribution of nonfiction and fiction. I, I have two daughters. Neither one of them particularly likes to read nonfiction, and yet is a really important skill to develop um, in life for lots of professions. I don't get to read fiction in my profession. It's sad. Um, but so I'm really, I'm really grateful for the work, and I'm really hopeful that the writing, we will see improvements in writing. To me, writing is critical, and I'm, I'm glad that we're um, looking at a curriculum that focuses on writing. Thank you. Other comments? I have one. Okay. Yes. Oh, Mr. Bryce? Yes, I'd like to take a moment um, just because our next meeting is in June and Teacher Appreciation Week is next week. I definitely want to just give a heartfelt uh, appreciation to all the teachers at Crescent, E.T. Hamilton, Signal Hill, VMS, and um, contrary to uh, what Mr. Pettit Jamar says, if he doesn't think many board members, I frequent Osage often because my kids go there <laughs> and I love Osage. So um, even the teachers at Osage. So I just want to really say um, thank you to all that the work that you do, the work that you've done for my children. Um, that goes beyond measure. OK, um, I understand I'm an educator myself 
and the school year is a long year and, mm-hmm. and it comes with ebbs and flows. But um, as I say, when I'm on uh, airplane, I, I look for that that signal that says flight attendants prepare for landing. It's coming down. School year is ending. So congratulate yourselves and uh, celebrate yourself next week. And I'll be celebrating with you. Ms. Stupler. Oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to our new hires. Um, I think we have a lot of change in the district and more change to come, which I think will be great and promising and a lot of new, fresh perspectives given. So I expect good things to come um, in the next school year. Um, I guess I know people had questions on the budget and just me personally has questions, um, spent a lot of time with Helen and Dr. Hackett and asking a lot of questions on how we spend money, why we spend money and how they choose to spend money. So it's not something that I've taken lately. Um, and I do appreciate what you said about, you know, not forgetting the, the employees, the low hanging fruit. I think you used that term. And that is one of my biggest um, priorities is making sure that they are, you know, employed full time. And Dr. Hackett can tell you, I've been, you know, in her ear a lot about that. So, and um, I really give these kids who get stood up and presented and actually work together for kids working together to write an unbelievable essay that won an award is not easy. And I'm sure, you know, for adults working together is not easy. So I can't imagine fifth graders, um, but putting together such an amazing um, piece um, to present and getting up here and being um, so diligent. So thank you. And um, again, thank you to the teachers and everybody that makes this school district so wonderful and they should be celebrated every day, not just teacher appreciation week. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, moving on to the curriculum, um, motion to approve. Oh, oh, did I miss policy? Oh, I know I skipped over something. Um, <laughs> can I get a motion? On, moving on to policy. Can I get? What happened? Oh. Locked out. I got oh. <laughs> <laughs> Off my game today. Um, okay, so moving on to policy. Uh, motion to approve all items under policy. So moved. Second. Online voting is open. <clears throat> Motion unanimously passes. Uh, moving to curriculum, um, can I get a motion to approve all of the items under curriculum? So moved. Second. Voting is open. Motion unanimously passes. Um, under personnel, we are going to break up the vote. Um, so please pay attention to the numbers that I will be calling out. Um, can I get a motion to approve all of the items under 18.2 through 18.36. So moved. Second. Voting is open. The motion unanimously passes. Can I get a, another motion under personnel for item 18.37? So moved. Second. Online voting is open. Motion has eight ayes and one abstention. 
The abstention is Ms. Verdi. I'm closing online voting. Now that the motions have passed, I want to um, first congratulate Mr. Moskowitz, Ms. Lyons, and Ms. Swast. And I believe all of you um, have a couple of brief words to share with everyone. So I will invite Mr. Moskowitz up first. Dr. Hackett, Mrs. Haley, Dr. Young, and all the members of the Board of Education. I wanna sincerely thank you for this opportunity. The Voorhees Township Public Schools thrive and strive for excellence in everything we do. Excellence with student performance and the social emotional well-being of our children as well as our staff. This is a reflection of our premier community and that's because of the efforts of the Board of Education, the administration, the teachers, the staff, the parent groups, and most of all our wonderful children that we serve. I look forward to working with the school community over the next few months during the transition. I will have big shoes to fill. Dr. Young has made the school district her life's work, 32 years of being an aide, a teacher, a vice principal and principal and assistant superintendent. I wish her well. To the Voorhees community and staff, I wanna tell you that I look forward to being an integral part, even though while the Hamilton school community knows me well, I look forward to being an integral part of all the other school communities and will make an effort to discover how every school is so unique and so special. I am honored and privileged to serve in this role. Thank you. Good evening. First, I want to thank the board, President Watson, Dr. Hackett, um, and the interview committee for giving me the opportunity to serve as the director of early childhood and literacy, K-5, to in Voorhees Township Public Schools. As Dr. Hackett mentioned, my 24 years in education have spanned working in two states, Reading School District in Haverford in Pennsylvania, and then Gloucester Township in Waterford. I was an elementary and middle school teacher, as she mentioned, an instructional coach for math and literacy, and currently serve as the director of elementary education and soon to be director of early childhood and literacy here. Um, when Waterford applied for the preschool expansion aid back in 2018, I found that just being part of that team who got to craft the grant and help build that program from its inception was extremely rewarding. It allowed the district to offer rich educational experiences that begin with our youngest learners as early as age three. And so I'm really excited to bring my literacy and early childhood experiences and skills to Voorhees. And I am so honored and humbled to be given the opportunity to contribute to building a high quality preschool and K-5 literacy program, as well as make a positive, I hope, difference in the lives of the students, staff, and the school community. And I must say that everyone that I've come into contact with, um, from the interview committee members to other staff, have been nothing but friendly, welcoming, and helpful. And I just can't wait to start. So once again, I thank you and look forward to this new exciting endeavor. So I did not come prepared with this speech. <laughs> so what I'm saying today um, will come from my heart. And um, I first want to thank Dr. Hackett, Dr. Alegria, um, the interview committee, just for giving me this opportunity. Um, I am truly honored to be in this position. I wanna thank the Board of Education for supporting me. Um, I started my career, I was, well, at 18. I started as an aide at Lark School in Belmar. I was a respite worker and I just have always just loved the field of special education. and. Um, just going through my, I, at every, every position, whether it was a teacher, um, an aide, um, a developmental interventionist, I constantly was growing and trying to learn more. But then when I came here to Voorhees, this is where I grew the most. And this is where it was my home. And this is 
or I became who I feel I was always meant to be. And um, it's because of the wonderful staff and the people who have always just embraced me and um, everywhere I go, I just feel so loved. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so eager to continue. I'm so grateful to uh, Mary and Andy, who were my mentors when I was a supervisor and for my administration degree, and to Dr. Alegria, who has always supported me, some of my crazy ideas, and really guided me and, you know, told me, well, you got to do it this way, gotta, and has really had taught me a lot. So I'm grateful to all of you, grateful to all of you. And I'm excited to just continue my, my own learning here and to continue to build our programs. So thank you all. It's great to see so much support. That's fantastic. Thank you. Moving to transportation. Um, can I get a motion to approve all of the items under transportation? So moved. Second. Online voting is open. Motion unanimously passes. Okay, moving to buildings and grounds. Um, can I get a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the submission of the pre-K grant project documents to the New Jersey Department of Education as shown on the attachments? So moved. Second. Online voting is open. The motion unanimously passes. I apologize to my fellow board members. I know at the last meeting we'd said that I would pause to see if there were any comments. I have not done so. It's not, I'm trying to organize between the computer and the hard draft. Um, we will correct this problem for next meeting, but I will start right now. Um, so moving under finance, finance, any board comments? Make the, I'm sorry, make the motion first. <laughs> okay, I will get this right eventually. Motion to approve all the items under finance. So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? Hearing none, we will vote. Online voting is open. There are eight yeses or eight ayes and one abstention from Mrs. Stubler. Moving to public comment, sorry. Um, anyone wishing to address the board, please approach the podium and write your name and address on the login sheet. If you are attending via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature to be acknowledged. While the board is limited in its ability to respond to the public on matters involving personnel litigation, negotiations and attorney client privilege, the board will now hear comments from the public relating any comments. Comments are limited to three minutes. The board will not take action this evening. You will be notified at some later time by letter, electronic mail, telephone, or in the context of a later board meeting of any action the board does take. Hello. 
Hello, my name is Andrea Osher. Um, and I had two questions that I wanted to ask of the board. Um, the first is with the new preschool that's opening, what is going on with like the instructional aids? Are we hiring new instructional aids? Are we transferring instructional, instructional aids? Do we have a decision on how we're going to staff it? And then secondly is with new hires of teachers, are they coming in at a step one or are they hired at a step two or above? And if so, is there anything that we could do to renew, renegotiate contracts for teachers that are still at a lower level? Um, and I ask that because I work for a large bank. We reevaluated salaries um, because we had people that were working there for 15 years that were getting paid less than people that were getting hired. So I just feel like we need to do what we can for our teachers because they are what teach our children and we would not be a district without them. Um, so I just am hopeful that, you know, people on the board are thinking about teachers that have been there for a while as well. I understand there's a hiring issue, but we still need to take care of our teachers. So if anyone has an answer. <laughs> we can't respond to you right now. Yes. <laughs> so food for thought, if you could please think about that. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Hackett will provide this response to you at some point. Yes, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kristen Steffen. Um, first, I want to congratulate Donna. We've worked together. Um, both of my children are, um, she's a case manager for both of my children. We have three, two have an IEP. I'm also a special education teacher in a different district. Um, twice tonight, I've heard some concerns, discussion about IEs, and I just want to um, express my love for the IAs that have worked um, with my children. They are both, all of them have been full-time um, community members, district employees for a very long time. They've built relationships with my family, my children. They know us, they know the teachers. They work um, very efficiently together. So I just wanna say, I definitely agree that there is a big and strong need for having um, full-time IAs. Um, and letting them build relationships with the teachers. It's so important that these adults, these IAs are here um, all day so that they can kind of plan with the teachers. That way they're not just running into the classroom at the last minute. That's very stressful as a teacher to just have someone come in um, part-time, someone that's not here all day in the same school um, does not help with, um, the lessons being run efficiently, students being supported in the best way possible. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other. Okay, no more comments. Um, comments from the board. I have a comment. Yes. And please forgive me if my voice shakes. I'm partly cold. I'm freezing up here, but. Sometimes I get a little nervous. Um, I just wanted to say, as we approach Teacher Appreciation Week slash Staff Appreciation Week, because I believe it's for all of the staff, um, it's such an honor to sit up here and with the staff that we have, the teachers that we have, you really do make our job so easy. And it's such an honor. I sit up here and I think to myself, the work that has gone into either our committee when it comes to the curriculum or, um, you know, the employees now that we have moving up into new positions, all of these things make me so proud. I'm just so overwhelmed at the job that our staff and our teachers do. Um, it, and I don't want to fumble up my words here, but it really is an honor as a community member, a parent and a board member 
And because of the job that you do, the excellent job that you do, it really makes being a board member such a um, honor and a pleasure to be on this board. So thank you so much. Other comments? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate Mr. Moskowitz as an ET Hamilton parent. Um, this is a bittersweet moment and uh, we are going to miss you at Hamilton and there are some really big shoes to fill. So congratulations. Uh, I know you're not going far, but we're going to miss you at Hamilton. I also wanted to take a moment again to, to thank our teachers um, in, in light of uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. I also wanted to thank Dr. Hackett and Ms. Haley for answering um, so many of my questions uh, leading up to our board meetings. I um, We go through our materials um, in advance and I have a lot of questions and they have always taken the time to um, help explain um, you know, the different components of the agenda and, and really help me feel comfortable um, and confident voting. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I also just wanted to take a moment to share um, that uh, I was accepted to the advanced cohort for the school board partners fellowship and that I will be attending an in-person convening in Atlanta later this um, month with school board members from across the country. Um, and that I'm very excited about that opportunity um, and that the fellowship has been a really fantastic learning experience. And I look forward to meeting with school board members from across the country and continuing to learn and bring the lessons um, back from, from that experience back home to Voorhees. So thank you. Any other comments from the board? I'd like to make another comment. Yes. I normally, um, I listen very intently um, to uh, a lot of different um, things. And one of the things I, I enjoy about being up here is hearing the expression of all of you guys that come up to the podium and stuff like that. As a counselor that I am, um, your feelings are real. So when um, two individuals just came recently and talked about, um, the affinity for instructional aids and the critical role that they play, it's almost like they're an extension of the teacher, but sort of in that counseling role where they develop rapport and they kind of assist the teacher. Um, so earlier when I made a comment, I thanked the teachers, but now I want to sit here and thank the instructional aides. And I think I see one with Miss Beth right there too as well, because Miss Beth did wonders with my son, Jason. And um, so I thank all of you guys and, and just in that appreciation, you guys deserve that love as well too. So. Thank you guys. Any other comments? Okay. Um, moving to executive session. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved. Second. I will. I will. Yes. Dr. Levy. Whereas the Open Publics Meeting Act authorizes the boards of education to meet in executive session under certain circumstances. Oh, sorry. And we need to vote first. <laughs> or I, I, I jumped the gun again. <laughs> Wait, yeah, everybody can I am failing today as president. Um, you can do either way. You're doing great. Okay, we're going into executive session for matters concerning negotiations, matters involving the purchase of real property and or the investment of public funds, and matters involving personnel issues, including but not limited to employment appointment, termination of employment terms and conditions of employment evaluation of performance, promotion or discipline of any public officer or employee. Um, we, I hate to say this, but I, I was asked by the public a long time ago to give a, a like a general number where I'm gonna say 20 minutes. If I don't hit it, don't hurt me. <laughs> um, but that's what we assume it will, that's how long we think it will be. Please feel welcome to leave if you would like. Um, there's, are there, is there action? There will be no action when we come back from executive session. Motion unanimously you know, passes. It's the 12th. Last year. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I don't know. So many papers. Oh, I don't know. Um, 
847. I wrote it down, but I don't know anymore. 847, we went. Can I get a motion to return from executive session? So moved. Second. Yeah. Hold on a second, please. Okay, sorry. We're, we're not up and running yet. Oh. That was I was too. I was too. Then... Nobody gets to see that we were. Second? We were like almost at 20, or were we a little over? It doesn't. It doesn't that happen if it wasn't yeah. online. Oh. <laughs> it, did, it never happened. Just online, like my online voting is open. My Apple rings. Oh. I didn't exercise. Oh. If the Can Apple rings don't close. I... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know. Can you mark me as I? I I'll just. Can I mark unanimous? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Unanimously, we're back. Oh, that, the meeting date is not correct. I know, I got it. Okay. Um, our next meeting will be June 12th, 2023, here at the um, administration building at 7 p.m. And that is it. Um, motion, uh, right? motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in, any not in favor? Motion that. Mm -hmm. well